So before I ruin uh, your conception of Steph Curry's basketball shooting form, uh, let's take a look at Steph Curry himself and let me point out a few things. When Curry is shooting from or inside the three-point line, he doesn't need tremendous power. So you can see he has a modest knee bend to store up a bit of power that he'll release in his jump and shooting action. As he straightens his knees into the jump, Steph is sending an energy wave upwards, first into his pelvic and hips, which are ready to receive the wave of vertical energy into a rotating movement of the pelvis and hips that brings Steph's right hip and right shooting arm in direct alignment, making the energy transfer from legs to shooting arm very efficient. The result is a shot that looks effortless. Of course, there is effort here, but Steph has made his motion so integrated and efficient, we don't see the effort in his action. So let's not call it effortless action, as this might set off one of those poor mental models in our players' heads I was talking about earlier. That effortless power, from their point of view, when they hear effortless power, they might think it's locked up in a genie's jar, and all we have to do is rub it or execute some trick, and voila, out pops effortless power. So let's call it invisible power. It's invisible, especially if we're watching a video of Steph Curry in real time. So a couple important points about this ripple of power. Again, there are many sources of power, but we're looking at this lower body to the upper body uh, power transmission. So I would add one more thing to the Tai Chi expression of power is rooted in the feet, powered by the legs, directed by the waist and expressed by the hands. And I think I'm on safe ground on this because my Tai Chi teacher, Jean Burnett, uh, has talked about this many times. So there's one essential missing component in that old Tai Chi expression, which is the hips and the pelvis. So Joseph Pilates, the founder of Pilates, the Pilates movement, described this area as the power engine, the power center. And that's the hips and the pelvis. Remember the spine of the upper torso is anchored inside the pelvis. So when we are trying to do anything with our upper body, everything starts in this pelvic area and then is transmitted up into the spine, out to the muscles, etc. So for the sake of this lesson, I want to modify that Tai Chi expression. So I think it should go, power is rooted in the feet, powered by the legs, hips, and pelvis directed by the waist and expressed by the hand. So the waist is the soft muscle tissue and uh, other parts of our body here that sits on the skeletal part of the spine and the hips. It's soft and flexible, but the real power comes from the hips and the pelvis turn, as we'll see. So with Steph Curry's setup, uh, we have a situation where his feet are not aligned towards the basket, which are essentially like the pointing towards the camera, but I'm off about 10 degrees. So why does this happen? Well, I'll describe how it works in, in tennis in a moment, but basically Steph starts down here and he's got to bring this shooting arm, hip and leg into alignment so that he can release the ball at the basket. So as he's pushing up with his legs, this hip is slightly rotating to the left to bring this up and then release the ball. So without this hip and pelvic snap, so it's more than a turn, it's like a pivot, the quick dynamic torquing action, quite a bit different than just a slow rotating action, but it kind of a twitch action in the hips and pelvis, tremendously powerful. And without that, this rising energy of the legs would go up and the transmission would be broken, right? Then we'd be back to a local power action in our upper body with our arms. So in tennis, we also have the similar dynamic. So if we're hitting a backhand, I would line my feet de-aligned from the target, so off center, and then I would turning and rotating into the shot here, and then out. Forehand, the same thing. My feet, because my hitting is further behind, probably even more de-aligned from the target. Now I'm coming around and 
rotating up a rising action here in contact and then follow through. So when Steph Curry is shooting a mid-range shot between 15 and 23 feet, if you will, uh, he doesn't need that much hip turn and knee bend and jump in order to generate enough power for his incredible accuracy. So you might see it look like, and we'll see it on camera, but basically it's just a little bit of a jump, but it's all one continuous motion with a little hip turn, right? So it goes, you know, something like that. Very simple, hardly looks like any power. But in terms of the long distance shooting between 28 and 47 feet that Steph Curry has opened up the boundaries of, we see something more accentuated in terms of understanding this ripple of power and this pelvic hip snap that I'm talking about. So for these long distance shots of Curry's, he has a deeper knee bend, about 25% more knee bend, because now he's going to draw more vertical energy into his body, right? And he's going to need a bigger, faster, more dynamic hip and pelvis snap in order to transmit the energy up into his upper body and shooting arm. So you'll see, of course, the much deeper knee bend. And then as he's rising, you'll see a much more dynamic pelvis and hip snap, uh, which is going to send a huge amount of energy into his upper body and finally into his shooting arm. So roughly it looks something like this, and I'll try to exaggerate a little bit uh, this hip and pelvis snap and you can see the actions of my legs and where they end up. So much deeper knee bend, right? Balls at the waist here, but it's all one rising motion. And then you'll see this, as it rises, this hip turn and twist in a snapping action so that energy is sent out much further than normally would. So one more thing about the pelvis hip snap in this ripple of power that we'll also see in Roger Federer's game and in our tennis game. Uh, when more power is needed, there's one other element that's significantly added in this middle area, which is there's more of a tilt from the back of the, the hips here in the back. So instead of standing so vertical, now we're gonna have more of this hinged action uh, in the lower back and in the upper back. And this is gonna enable us to transmit this energy much more in this horizontal arc from a long distance. So in doing that, we'll get a backward thrust of the buttocks, much like we have in tennis, where the great servers suck in their stomach and their buttocks protrude to get that last bit of energy into their arm action. Now Curry is shooting just inside the half court line, probably around 40 feet away. Now he needs more power and you see the forward lean of his uh, body. As Curry rises and executes this pelvis hip snap, you can see his left hip has swung around and brought his right side shooting arm into alignment with his right hip and leg. In this final photo you see the leg split and you see a little bit of the buttocks back thrust as this propels energy forward for this Curry long range shot. So thank you for watching the first two parts of our Ripple of Power series. The next video, I promise, will be focused on how this Ripple of Power process and technique applies to tennis and the strokes of Roger Federer. We'll follow that up with some quick tips on incorporating this Ripple of Power into your own game.